threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah. Now Woo. we're talking. It's about time. <laughs> We're all just wasting time till we're dead. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, boy. Yeah. You said it there, brother. Cameron? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Bud? Good. 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 Creep vibes. What is on? What's What are we doing today? What's up, buddy? Prepping with kids. Oh, gosh, Let's yeah. Let's get right to it. Let's get right to it. It's the hardest thing yeah. in the world. If you got kids, you know it's hard. If you don't got kids, just turn it off because you don't got to worry about any of this. Yeah, you're going to survive. Yeah, you're you're going to be just fine. You're going to be yeah. happy in the apocalypse. You're going to be one of those guys smiling, riding their <laughs> motorbike around, probably. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. We're going to need to go home. Yeah. Watch right here. That's kids right. don't have any. Don't got none. But That's there's a lot to talk about. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we did it a um, long time ago. And I re-listened to it, and it was a little bit painful. Was it? Yeah. yeah. It was all over the place. And we, we combined it I mean, with pets. I mean, we're all over the place. <laughs> which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> I think that was like the perfect combo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This time, just yeah. full-on kids. Just full-on kids, no animals. 100% kids. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to talk to you about BattleBox. It is the monthly subscription box for men, full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, BattleBox sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival <clears throat> and everyday carry gear. <laughs> I'll value uh, far more than what you normally pay. You're the one that gave me this drink. Your wife is just <laughs> like super disgusted She's now. crying right now. <laughs> um, I can't do it. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users receive. A burp? This month. <laughs> Oh, man, I tried to hold it back, and I felt like I was going to puke if I didn't let it out. You can't with some of these. It's so hard. I was feeling a little, like, tired, and I, like, chugged this (laughs) stuff before we started, hoping that caffeine would kick in. Mm. (laughs) The bubbles kicked in. Backfired. Backfired. No, I Um, front-fired. Front-fired, yeah. So they got the Fox Edge Arrowhead set, which is really rad. Then the Raptor Razor Filet Mano kit. Yeah, we're going to talk about this thing later on today. But all this badassness starts at just 30 bucks a month. They've shipped almost a million boxes and won Best Men's Subscription Box of 2017. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casualpreppers. Get your first battle box plus that free knife at trybattlebox.com slash casualpreppers. What are you doing? He's looking at it right now. I was eager to. I didn't see you open it on the Instagram. Yeah, some good stuff, man. It's, It's really good. Listener reviews starts now. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, those are definitely cool. All right. Okay. This is pure entertainment for my dirty little ear holes. Mm-hmm. With a big chunk of country spoken dialect, these two guys entertains on a whole new level <laughs> when it comes to entertainment and educational use regarding topics around prepping survival in this mad, mad world. With a big variety of topics, all from sucking water sprinklers to setting up your savings and investments. That doesn't make any sense how we put those. So I, I had a hard time reading this too, but then I realized it looks like No, I like mean like a... the, our podcast oh, yeah. covers what he just said there. Mm-hmm. To secure you and your family's future for all the obstacle it may face you. Thank you guys for an amazing pod. I've listened to you from the first episodes, but got really stuck <laughs> after the episode <laughs> about thing, things a man should be able to do. Yeah. Um. It's just like listen to him re- mentioning things in the same podcast. Yeah, we're we're weirdos. Yeah, we definitely are, man. The most Th- chaotic, freaking random crap. This is from Ogi Yishevasa. No, you see that name? Oh how yeah. Do you, how do you pronounce that? I don't know. That O looks cool. It does look cool. But if you guys want to be a part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five star review, make it awesome. 
It's a mad, mad world. So I'll go first on this one, Cam, since you just read that. But I want to read you a quick story that was from like two weeks ago. Yeah. So a Taiwanese news channel has broadcast by mistake a fictional news alert that said Chinese armed forces had launched an invasion. Are you serious? Firing <laughs> missiles at cities and ports surrounding the capital of Taipei. Several news captions declaring a violent attack by China's People's Liberation Army had been mocked up for forthcoming security drills, but were broadcast accidentally to Ty- Taiwanese viewers at 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Oh my God. New Taipei City has was hit by communist missiles. I love how they call them communist <laughs> missiles. The Taipei port has exploded. Facilities and ships were damaged and destroyed. The Chinese <laughs> television system's news ticker read, On the brink of war, the Chinese Communist Party prepares for war. Or the president has issued an emergency order. This all went out on the news in, in Taiwan. Why don't we get a couple of newscasts ahead of time? Yeah, just in case. Yeah, good chance it's going to happen. We just hit the button That's and it goes, weird. oh my gosh. If we get destroyed, it's going to go out anyway. Yeah. The partly government-owned CTS station issued an on-air clarification and apology several hours later, saying the report had been created in conjunction with emergency services for the drills but had been accidentally broadcast. Hours later, they issued an apology. You won't think you would just say, like that, like after it came out, like right after. (laughs) Hey, sorry about that. We noticed we slipped that in there this morning. (laughs) We apologize. We had several calls asking about this war. Chen, why don't we go to the... uh, (laughs) Did you just say Chen? Yeah, I don't know. I was using some name. I'm not going to use a voice to be on the safe side, but it's like... I know. Why don't we look at news? Or let's. We got done with weather. Let's let's look at today's yeah. news, and it changes. So like we're on the brink of war. <laughs> yeah. like, wait a minute. Now, uh, since you guys heard that, let's go to Apologize traffic and weather that. together at the top of the <laughs> yeah. nines. This is like, oh my gosh. And then this was two days ago. Another one that just came out. China. This is real. China has surrounded Taiwan with warplanes and warships as the People's Liberation Army conducts more wartime drills in their quest to ensure the island stays under Chinese control. Oh my god. They literally did. A drill where they surrounded Taiwan. It's the same crap that like Russia's. Like, mm, yes, you really. How'd you guys go familiar. ahead and do that? You got like all your stuff lined up on yeah. the border, and they were cool with that. Yeah, we sent us your notes on that. <laughs> we're gonna see. We how it goes. you're not doing too hot, so we're gonna do. It yeah, different. we're gonna tweak a few things in the process. Oh man, I know. So, anyways, pretty crazy, huh? Have you seen those videos of like some of the? Um, and I don't know. I don't know. News is news, you know. I don't. Yeah, sure. I don't know how serious it is, but. Or real, but the uh, like the downed fighter jets have like taped GPS systems on their dashes oh, and stuff. Really? Like Russia, like some of their drones are opened up, and there's like a GoPro camera. Like their oh, technology is not all that they claim it is. Yeah, or they're just getting rid of all their junk. So crazy, man. So um, this one I thought was interesting because we talk about the possibility all the time mm-hmm. of a delightful cyber crime. Mm-hmm. So, ransomware. Costa Rica has declared a state of emergency after ransomware hackers crippled computer networks across multiple government agencies. Noise. Including the finance ministry. Yeah. There they go. I know. Taking all our money. Mm. So, um, I'm, I'm going to make it short. That's yeah, all right. it was. It's just Costa Rica is in the state of emergency because of a cyber crime. It's so crazy to me. Wow. So, mm. get your surf shark. You got to get it. Governments, if you're listening, I'm sure you are. Yeah. Get your Surfshark. Joe, if you're listening right now, <laughs> I think we need Surfshark in the United a, States. A... <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get to the episode, though, we did have a t-shirt giveaway going on, and I said the only way that you're going to get, you're going to win this is if you listen and hear your name. Oh, that's good. So here it is. Yeah. The winner is at Anna Hempfling on Instagram. Anna Hempfling is... H e m p f l i n g. Had a girl. Had a girl. You done oh one. You done one. So if you want your shirt sent over to you, shoot us a message. Yeah. DM us your info. Do it. Do it. All right. Do it. Do it. So Cameron, we are talking about prepping with kids. This is a question that comes up really frequently for us. Yeah. <clears throat> like a- you said, we did an episode forever ago. Yeah. There's always like the the parent or one parent's only prepping. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times those kids aren't going to be involved in that planning either. Right, yeah. So it's like, 
how do you get them both involved? What are mm-hmm. things you can do? So we figured, and there's so let's, many let's, things. Oh, there's a ton. Like we can't even fit it all into this episode. Yeah. We're going to try and hit the, the high points of it all. And, um, we're going to break down like different types of kids near the end. So if you've got, well, Fun I mean, kids, ugly kids, yeah. fat kids, mostly just ugly and Funny fat kids. kids. <laughs> we're going to yeah. talk about, um, but the first thing when the first thing I go to in any prepping scenario is an emergency plan. And I think with kids, it's actually even more important to have a plan because again, kids, uh, disrupt, they're shifty. Everything in life. <laughs> they're shifty. You never know what they're going to be doing. But <clears throat> the cool thing with an emergency plan is it allows you to sit down with your kids and actually get it down on paper. What is your plan? I for think that's huge. Most scenarios having like, you can see yes. here, <laughs> The steps. <laughs> As you if see we're here, dead, shut up. Listen. Go to this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So filling out these plans with your kids, it gives them almost a sense of ownership with the plan, right? It's like, mm-hmm. what did we talk about? What was the plan that we made together, right? Even though you're the one that's really making the you, plan. My crayon signature is right here at the <laughs> yeah, bottom. That's right. I got a marker <laughs> right there. Bled through. Yeah. Mom's pissed. But it gives you a, them a sense of ownership with the plan, and it kind of gets them excited that you're doing it together. Yeah. Even though when it comes down to you're the one that's making the plan right so the cool thing is is these plans are going to spell out what their role is during these emergencies and i know i talk about this all the time but since we're specifically talking about kids i feel like it's even more important it gives them these clear cut things that they need to do during these emergencies and it, that helps them from freaking out yeah, right they go back to like i've got to go through these <clears throat> yes exactly and, and it helps them actually get things done that are going to be helpful. Not panic right. and run right into a fire. <laughs> yeah, run right into a wall. Who knows what they're <laughs> going to do? Um, and the, the thing with kids is they have a hard time remembering things. Like, sometimes it it drives me insane. It's like, I didn't know I had to make my bed when I, I cleaned my room. No, we've done this probably 800,000 times. <laughs> and you're saying you didn't remember that you I had know. to do that, right? So with these, it's great because they can actually keep a copy with them of these emergency plans. They can have them in their backpack or in their bedroom or wherever it needs to be that they can lift it, put it towards their eyes and read the (laughs) things they're supposed to do. I want a Minecraft poster. No, you're going to have an emergency plan. I'll put it right next to your bed. You're going to look at it every night. I'll sign it for you. Pledge allegiance to it. Yeah. Before you go. But that's what I like about it. You know, in this plan, um, should also kind of spell out the things that your kids are going to do at school during this emergency. We've had this question. We just had one recently, but are they going to follow the school's emergency plan, which probably I would suggest, yes, follow that plan, except for crazy contingencies, right? Um, The thing is, they're at school every day, you know, during the week. And so having a plan laid out for that is crucial since you're not going to be together. They need to know what to do there. Where's my dad? Where's my mom? I don't know. My so, son Bennett, they just did a school bus drill. Oh, did they? And he came, <laughs> he came home all stressed out. Did he? It's just been a bad day. We did a school bus drill. It was stressful. <laughs> Kids were screaming. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I was like, wow. What is a school bus drill? What do they do? They have them go out the back door, I guess. Oh, I see. I think like, that's about like an all emergency. They do. Yeah, yeah. Fire a couple rounds into the side. <laughs> <laughs> Drop down. <laughs> grenade! Grenade! grenade. <laughs> Molotov coming in. <laughs> Johnny, you're up front. You're going to be the first kid to jump on it, okay? <laughs> I was going to say some jokes that I'm just letting go because I'm going to get in trouble. I already yeah, burped once. I can't get in more that's trouble. True. That's true. But if you go to that ain't Red- funny stuff. <laughs> no. Go to redcross.org. This is the one I like. Or you could just Google family emergency plan. There's a billion of them online. Pick one you like. Start filling it out. Get them crayons ready, right? <laughs> um, so the cool thing about uh, these emergency plans is part of that discussion is going to be scenarios that you might face. Um, that's a big part of it. And so this could be a little bit of a delicate process depending on how sensitive your kids are. Right. And, you know, or how exposed to those types of things your kids have been in the past. But I think it's a great exercise because you're going to list off any possible scenario that might come your way. And this gives you that opportunity to discuss each of them, you know, what it might mean and how you're going to mitigate those issues when, when they arise. I think it's great to have these discussions early with kids because it's better that you've talked with them about this, you know, before they hear about it from like some random newscast or True. or friends at school. So they're going to understand what it is. Otherwise, we'll be like, oh, my gosh, what is this? You know, and they're going to think about it and stew on it and get anxiety. And they're like, oh, no, <laughs> <Right>. you know, <clears throat> but if you've talked to them, say, hey, it's probably not going to happen. But if it does, 
look, we're going to do this and this and this, and it's going to be all right, right? Kids are sensitive souls. Yeah, yeah. And you, granted, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of kids with anxiety nowadays, more than I mm-hmm. you know, ever thought when I was younger. Yeah, I don't for know sure. if it was there, but like, I think you can do it in a, in a, like a delicate way mm-hmm. of like, this is important, don't worry about it. Yeah, and a lot of people well, that worry are, about it, but not in a yeah obsessive. A lot of people that aren't pr- preppers or kind of outside of the preparedness community, they think that this process basically just scares them. Yeah, and gives them yeah. anxiety. But that that could be the case with some kids. But honestly, in my experience with my children, it's actually done the opposite. Yeah, I agree. And <clears throat> I have a kid. Yeah, he's, he's pretty anxious all the time, uh-huh. and he likes to talk about this stuff. So. Yeah. So I think it, some like comfort in knowing like we have a plan and like yes. we're ready for things. Exactly. Anytime we're watching something with my with my kids, like a movie or something, and it's like I think I've talked about this before, but when we watch Greenland, you know, it's pretty intense. Yeah. And it's kind of scary. But my kids were like, Look, Dad, we'd be okay, right? We would just get our bug out bags and we would do this and we've got food in the basement, so we would go and it's like, Yeah. You know, I don't what I mean? show them Moonfall. I don't know. Way I more realistic. Is it? I don't even know if I can rent it yet, but I probably <laughs> will just because it's so awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would we go to bed if the whole hotel was underwater? <laughs> That's the part For that sure. came to my mind, too. <laughs> For sure. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You got to be well rested. Yeah, you get, just take that You can't nap. trudge through that water if you're tired. You might wake up wet, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Story of my life. Story of my <laughs> life. We're going to wet. <laughs> that well, is a good one. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Yeah, we, we need to do like a, a Mystery Science Theater 3000 <laughs> really or something should. with that where we watch along with people and just make it's fun of it. It's a perfect one to be like, don't do that. <laughs> exactly. Um, another piece of this with kids is that practice and the drilling these, this is the hardest part for me. Um, you've got to practice parts of your plan is pretty important, right? That is hard. Have actually gone through it. Um, I always think of, do they understand how to get out of their windows in case of a fire or something like that? That's the thing that always scares me. Can they get the freaking screens out? Yeah. And they pop those screens out. They're not easy sometimes, right? My kids... To pop those out, they're going to fall like oh, yeah. 12 feet. <laughs> a long way, right? So I think it's probably a like good idea. 25 feet. I got a huge house. Yeah, man. Huge old house. And there's a cliff right off the back of it, too. <laughs> It'll It'll fall right on the land. Right down into the moat. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. But I do worry about that. Like, you know? Like, how do they even know how to exit the house when the doors aren't? <laughs> You can't Can they out walk the out the door? <laughs> Do they know where all the doors are? The doors are locked. Do you know how to get out? <laughs> but, like, actually, take a second. Have them pop out those screens. I mean, I think I had the conversation with my kids once. If you can't get the screens out, just put your hand through the screen. Yeah. Just go through yeah. it. You'll be fine. You know, don't don't wait for the fire to come. Just yeah. get out somehow. But, again. And the first thing after the event's over. Mm-hmm. Who broke the screen? <laughs> and I'd be so mad. <laughs> it would be like, you guys are grounded for a month. <laughs> Those things are impossible. That fire was in the basement nowhere near you. <laughs> that was your neighbor's house. <laughs> yeah. That was a wildfire. Why'd you crawl out? Cross the, cross the valley. <laughs> yeah. You know? On the TV. What were you thinking? <laughs> we were watching Backdraft, son of a bitch. <laughs> That's a good movie. Yeah, it's a good I movie. actually rewatched it not too long ago. Oh, really? It wasn't as good as when I was I haven't seen it, it forever. Good. But anyways, that's like that practice, you know, have you gone through that? Do they know how to do those things? Can they use two-way radios? Do they have any idea how to use it? How to change it. Yeah. Yeah. I sent my kids walk down the canal bank and I'm like, take this walkie talkie with you and we'll Mm -hmm. we'll holler at you when you need to come back from like dinner. Mm -hmm. And somehow they changed the channel and they didn't know how to get back to it. And I'm like, (laughs) that's how it goes. Yeah. But you know, going through those things, um, do they know where the bug out bags are and how to get to them quickly? Set up some time that you can physically go through some of your plan and right. practice it. Kids are always going to learn and understand things so much better when they do it. Yeah, when it's hands on, big time. Exactly. So those are parts of that planning, emergency uh, uh, plan. You know, things that you should be thinking about with the kids. Yeah, anyways. and I think I think the plan is like the very most important thing you can do. I agree. So um, I'm there with you. Engaging them in like some prepping activities that can both teach them skill and kind of get them a little excited about some prepping things. You don't have to label everything. This yeah. is prepping camping. Yeah. This is prepping pantry storage. Yeah. This is prepping prepping. You don't have to even say it. No, for just that. say that like this is just um, we're just getting prepared for. Uh, dying kids in case. <laughs> well, just wasting time until we're dead anyway. <laughs> we're just getting ready for yeah tornado. But um, I wanted to make. Did you say tornado? Tornado. <laughs> that's 
That's a bunch of wind that's in a, a cornfield. <laughs> that's a tornado, kids. <laughs> that's a bra- that's a Look tornado that. ripping those husks all that's up. That's an F two, probably. <laughs> Yeah, that was the Twister ended it with a tornado. It did, huh? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Grab some butter and salt. <laughs> just <laughs> commenting on this comment. Okay. So reading some forums, like this is the exact type of person that just drives me nuts. Oh, okay. But this is like the type that I feel like are probably going to lead their kids in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. So one of the comments like said, <clears throat> fun. I suppose preparedness can be made fun. <laughs> <laughs> to a small extent only, though. Oh, Pride yeah. and work, hard work, direct directed efforts for the family and thereby themselves to benefit from should be of more value than any notion of entertainment. Good Lord. <laughs> the first step is in having having obedient, responsible, reality-grounded children. This right. person does not have children. No. Without a modern concept of being friends with your children. Modern concept. I'm just like, what is this, dude? Oh, I God. can guarantee you that this type that's like... Prepping needs to be serious. Mm-hmm. It's not like something to toy around with. Like those kids are either going to be sociopaths, yeah, or they're just going to give up on. Like I don't want to live like that. Yeah, and they're going to be mm-hmm. like most people. Yeah. Anyways, I just like oh my gosh, the first comment in this like how to like help your kids. Yeah. Article I read it was like no 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 I don't make fun of it. It's good. <laughs> anyway, can't wait to tell these guys how um, to do it. <laughs> Yeah. There was some key where's cat prep? I'm gonna comment on their videos. I know. They drive me nuts. <laughs> um some key tips that I felt were kind of good to talk about. Don't freak them out too much, obviously. Sure. We were talking about that. You know, don't tell them Russia's invading mm-hmm. after they get through through Ukraine. Um don't assign them too much, you know. You need to open a door, you need to fill the guns, you need to get them all loaded, get the flashlights, go downtown, fill up the truck, come on back. Anybody who comes to the front door, you got to shoot them between the <laughs> yeah, eyes. Right. You know, Don't ask questions. They're kids. Nah. Shoot them in the ass. Yeah, especially if they're kids. <laughs> yeah. If you hit them in the eyeball, that's okay. <laughs> but, like, don't give them way too many things. Yeah. They're just going to be like, well, oh, this is... I know overwhelmed. It, it's like when we did our emergency. Basically, plan, tell them to grab their bag and meet in the living room. The only thing I've given my kids basically is don't animals. push the screen out. Animals. Oh yeah. You get the cat. Right. You get the dog. <laughs> and naturally, they're going to go right to that. Oh yeah. I could be lying half dead. The cat could be lying half dead. They would run to the cat. <laughs> make so sure true. the cat's okay. That is the truth. Dad, can you help us? No, yeah. I'm, I'm half dead. When you think cat, let's break it down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's put it into a. Yeah. Anyway, um, don't assume that they know something that they don't. Like, yeah. Oh, my kids will get that. Like, it's like no too many people. Hell, he knew that right four wheeler drives it into the <laughs> ditch or the fence. Like the first like two seconds. That reminds me of the first time I got on a snowmobile. Like fourth grade, I went right through my neighbor's fence. <laughs> like I went, and it was his snowmobile too, in his fence. And I was going 100 million miles an hour, and the freaking barbed wire got me right in the neck. And Holy just crap. Almost decapitated me and sent me off the thing. Holy crap. And I ran home. Like, I ran down the road. I didn't even stop to talk to my neighbor. I just ran all the way home. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> <Must know. laughs> almost decapitated. But it's like kids think they know already, oh, yeah. and then, like, some parents just assume they know how to, like, yeah. you know, get the things that... They don't are know. crucial to your plan. Right. So you, you really got to assume that they don't know and go over it. Um, the <laughs> That's what I mentioned there, the four. Um, and don't force your views on them. Like, just kind of involve them in your planning and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't need to know exactly, like, that you're afraid that, you know, the economy's crashing and all that sure. stuff. Just kind of explain to them, you know, that we're preparing for, you know, disasters and mm-hmm. tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, things that are, like, more realistic events that most people are scared about. So um, don't underestimate their ability and don't assume they're too young. Yeah. Like kids will be involved with that stuff early on, like really early. They get interested in, you know, the gear that you're using and the bags and like Mm -hmm. they want to be part of that. So Um, some of the, some little things that you can do that are kind of fun. Um, An emergency scavenger hunt. I thought this sounded pretty stupid, but. Okay. Like I actually think it would, like when I first read it, I'm like scavenger hunt, but. Um, I think it would be pretty cool. Like you could tell your kids, um, you know, let's go find all of you go find a flashlight in the different places in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, you could do like a scavenger hunt for other types of gear. Where's the blackout kit? You know, where, uh, do we keep all of our water stored just so they know like where those things are. Go get daddy a beer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Go downstairs, <laughs> we're locking the door in our bedroom, <laughs> and you can find your stuff, watch TV for a minute. Mommy and daddy time. Um, but yeah, daddy chopped his hands off. Mm. Can't call for help. How do you call for help? Things yeah. like that. Um, spend some time explaining to them food storage, like um, why you have it. Because that's, that's probably the first thing they're going to notice. It's like you keep all your food in like certain spots of the house, and mm-hmm. it's like, why are we not using this food? Why do we keep it down here? Why should we not be using the toilet paper from the storage area? Yeah. Like <laughs> teaching them why you keep those things and and don't use them. Because my kids always like, I'll buy like a box of like snacks because I'm like they're gonna want snacks and I you know and so those mm-hmm. are stored away for like when you have no way of yeah. wanting to go to the grocery store and they, and they always get into them. It drives me nuts. So that's a good opportunity to punish them mm. and tell them why they're not supposed to get into yeah. that stuff. Um, Use that paracord. Tie them up. <laughs> yeah. Go get go get the longest piece of paracord you can find, son, and bring it back. To me. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna teach you a couple knots. I learned. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, daddy. Um, blackouts. Like kids love that scenario. Oh yeah. It's like power out, mm-hmm. and then you you know you can break out candles, flashlights, play some board games, games. And then four minutes later, they're bored and yeah. they want electronics. Oh, Aren't you moving now? Yeah. <laughs> no, we have no power. Oh, well, it's really there. I see the neighbor lights around. Internet's not working. <laughs> yeah. But um, those are things like little kids definitely like the blackout scenario. Yeah. Um, that's a good opportunity to teach them like indoor cooking. You know, don't yeah. start a fire in the middle of the living room. You're going to die. Um, we have these different things that can cook without poisoning us all carbon monoxide and other things hiking that's a good opportunity for them to like put a bag together mm-hmm. and and you know you can talk to them about getting lost and how to navigate what a compass is i still don't know how to use one yeah and like but it's a good opportunity to like go through maps go through trails beforehand like where we're going to be hiking at and camping and like if there's an issue where to go after that um oh weird that was weird. <laughs> like a whistle <laughs> um Camping, Kobe's going to talk a little more on this for like skill training, but it's a good opportunity too to go through some of your gear that you're going to also use in a survival scenario. Gardening, kids love to plant and see things grow and talk about why we're planting these particular things and how we can use them and, and things like that. Um, survival books. My yeah. my son, like he, he loves those ones that are like choose your adventure or like... Uh, events that people have survived through he's like obsessed with that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but those books are great because like i loved hatchet when i was a kid yeah it's like man if i was in the forest and i had a hatchet for me it was my side of the mountain i could have <laughs> oh, yeah. did you read that no oh, i remember you telling me about that one. all my kids have read it now but like that stuff's it. cool um yeah. even the old shows like uh swiss family robinson my kids love that one mm-hmm. and um and I, I mentioned Squad. that too like different different movies and stuff and books can really help kind of gain, uh, build their awareness and thought of interest survival. in it even you know yeah an interest in it yeah um like yeah hatchet was good and uh what was the other one it was the the wilderness family that one's cool i don't, don't it's an know an old that one and they oh, like really? move out of town and they build this cabin up in the woods and they have to do it it's almost like little house on the prairie but uh, up in the mountain yeah it's a good one <clears throat> um geocaching you could use that to kind of help them you know, navigate with GPS equipment and things like that. Because, yeah. you know, hopefully satellites and all that stuff still working. you got to teach them at some point how to use that stuff. Um, real life treasure hunting. That's cool. Yeah, for sure. Foraging and, and botany cards. Like, we have those ones that talk about the different plants and how you can use them on the back side of the card. It tells you, like, if it's edible or what it's been used for. Like, those are super useful. My kids got, like, super into, like, tracking bugs and uh. plants and stuff because they had little cards to identify. So you can kind of get them into that if you're hiking or camping. Um, scouts and other groups like that are good. Kind of teach them to go out and hate scouting. I know. I <laughs> I, I was never a good scout. I wasn't either. I was a boy scout. Uh, not a good scout. I, was, I wasn't either. No, I, like, they can be good. They I mean, they do teach some really cool stuff and... Some people, some kids really like latch onto it and they love it. Mm-hmm. I was not one of those children. Um, I learned to survive my own way. That's I had right. to survive farming and my dad's mm-hmm. criticism of everything I did. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> um, survival video games. I know people are like, oh, what? <laughs> Don't do that. But that, like a lot of my kids have gotten into the survival thing by like 
seeing like Minecraft scenarios that are like survival. Yeah. Zombie games. Obviously, it's like this isn't realistic, but it's but it's fun too. It's like what would you what kind of gear would you gather? Like mm -hmm. they'll watch um like Daisy and stuff, and they're like, oh yeah, you gotta get that can of soup. You don't want to go yeah. without food. Like they kind of learn some of the key details of surviving you know, in a post-apocalyptic post world. And it's just fun, and it, it kind of even gets them involved in, like... Yeah, and you got to do the stuff. things that they're going to enjoy. You can't just say, we're going to go out and tie a paracord knots for six hours yeah, in the exactly. sun. Like, it's not going to work. It's like, yeah, we live in a modern day. Yeah. That, like, kids like video games, so... Use, use it, it to your, your benefit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so let's talk about some of these uh, training and skill development things that you can do. And Cam mentioned camping. This is, I think it's so great for kids, you know, take them a couple of times a year. They love it. Um, and it's just a great opportunity to teach and practice some awesome survival and prepping skills without like coming out and saying, we're just going to go practice survival and prepping skills. You're out just having fun. Yeah. Right. You have, you can set up a camp. That is a great skill to have, you know, picking the right spot for your camp, gathering firewood, gathering kindling and talking about how to do that and how to get the dry wood and what, what's good for kindling and all those types of things. It gives you a chance to cook outdoors. You know, you're not just cooking in the oven. You're, you're doing things a different way that they may have to do in some sort of a SHDF situation. It can teach you wild animal safety. Yeah. If you're in a place that has bears, you don't just want to leave your, your steaks out at night next right. to the inside your, your tent, right? There's those things that you have to teach them that they have no idea about. And it's a great opportunity. I know to camping do that. with my kids, they learn how to find places that to avoid as many humans as possible. Oh yeah, that's, so I'm teaching that's them stealth. exactly teaching them. That's a good how skill. to live off the grid and be stealthy. And it's a hard skill to learn. Super these days. hard. Yeah. How to sleep in the outdoors? I was thinking about this one because oh my gosh, when I remember when I, I was still little, figured that out. Yeah, it's like how how do you set up your tent in a way that is sleepable? That's true. Well, I, I remember a couple times specifically, me and my half uncle would go out you know he was a year older than me we would just go camping i don't know <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I did crazy shit when i was little i can't believe my parents let me do it Same we, you know and and i would like set my sleeping bag up downhill so my head was downhill <laughs> over rock and i wake up and my head's like five times larger than it should be about how to stroke at night you know what i mean when it was so stupid <laughs> that's the very thing i remember too you know and i'm like why did i do that why didn't you i wake up in a ball like at the edge of your tent because <laughs> yeah. you slid down there you're like exactly. why am i sleeping so crappy this ain't a great spot. Did the earth shift? Yeah, it was weird. But showing them those things, how do you do that? How can you stay warm at night when it's cold? Those are all great skills to learn, and camping kind of gives you those uh, those skills in a way that's kind of fun. For sure. Another uh, aspect is fishing, hunting, and cooking. So all these skills are great for survival, but they're also super fun for the kids. Fishing is the easiest one, except I just... Excuse me. I mean, <laughs> it should be the easiest one. Just because it's you, easiest to get kids, like, yeah, because you can just pull up to a stream. Exactly, you, got all your stuff right you get there. a fishing license and you go. Oh, it's, you got to have fishing license? Yeah, <laughs> not here. I don't think. <laughs> I think you just got to flash your Trump flag and you're good to go. But <laughs> what you? Oh, oh yeah, Trump twenty twenty four. I get you. Uh, fishing is the easiest because it's just simple. You just you just put a lure on and you throw it in the water and you wait. Hopefully yeah. it works. But it's Hopefully also it sucks. Something happens so they don't get. Like, have you ever been fishing with, like, three or four kids at one time, and all you're doing is taking snags out for, like, <laughs> yeah. six hours? As soon as you cast one in, oh, the other God. one's like, I got some! Yeah. Snap the line. You're yeah. like, they're of a... getting the, their, the kid next to them with the, yeah. oh, it's a mess. Yeah, and one gets super frustrated because mm -hmm. one caught a fish, and oh, the yeah. didn't, and they're like, I don't want to do it Pushes them in the lake, and then you got to get the kid out of the lake. <laughs> yeah. It's a mess. But so fishing is a good one. Hunting, is it's a little bit harder because... It's obviously has seasons and you got to have someone who's experienced in it and those types of things, but those are great. This teaches that self-reliance. It reteaches, it teaches that respect for animals. It, it's uh gun safety and bow safety, those yeah. types of things, field dressing animals. What a great skill to have, but, um, you got to go through it to learn it. That's about the only thing you can do. Food preservation, them stalking skills, like Cam was talking about, um, you know, being stealthy, getting away from people, all those types of things. And it teaches them to shut up. That's Cause true. Cause you can't go, you can't go hunting and be talking the entire time. Right. And that's a hard skill for some kids to learn. <laughs> it sure is. Man, you, you want to 
put a kid through something that's hard for him, take him coyote hunting, where you're just sitting there in the damn cold and you just don't do anything forever. My my dad's always, I won't take him coyote hunting. You're like, and you get out there and it's like sitting there for an my, hour. My kids don't need to go through that. <laughs> my kids have had it hard enough, Dad. <laughs> put them through a lot of things. I'm not gonna send them coyote hunting too. <laughs> and that's like his favorite thing in the world to do is so go funny. shoot dogs out there, you know. <laughs> Not real dogs, coyotes. He calls them dogs. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He calls them dogs. Yeah. Um, and then cooking is great as well because it's not only great for understanding that in emergencies, but it's a great life skill. Learning how to cook at a young age is fantastic for it kids, is. right? Uh, they nothing, don't know that it just appears in yeah. mom's hands. Ain't nothing worse than like a young adult who can't cook. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. You've seen them a hundred times yeah. before. <laughs> Tragic story. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> try and avoid it for your kids if you can. Um, and uh, something I was thinking about, too, is make sure that they've gone through the process of actually cooking that emergency food, that long-term That's, yeah. shelf life food. I don't think I've food. ever had my kids do that. Because so. who knows if they're going to have to crack that open and you're not there for some reason, I mean, who knows what's going to be going on. If they got the food, they might just open that thing out and start pouring it into their mouth. No kidding. What would they do? Five to ten servings and they like <laughs> yeah. cook like all of it. Right? Yeah, like they wouldn't have any idea to put syrup on it and just start eating the powder. They don't know. <laughs> it's true. I didn't think about that. So I think it's a great thing to go through that process. Because you don't, you don't open and use those packages. No. There's like, where's the macaroni cheese box? Yeah. How no, do, how do I do that? that? I can't just put it in the microwave and go. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's great to go through that process with them and, and show them how it's done because they're not, they don't know. Fire. This one, it's a hot topic, you know. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, it is. Obviously, you need to make Strikes them. Strikes a lot of interest. Sure does. Fans the flames of <laughs> desire. So, <laughs> Such a good one. Such a good one. I can't go anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, it's a burning hot topic. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you need to make sure that they understand how dangerous it is. You know, fires. Again, when I was a little kid, I'd run around with matches. And oh, my gosh. I was starting fires everywhere. I had, like, a whole tree branch oh. in the camping fire. Wow, it's like man. my parents, I'm like, what were they doing? I can't believe. We used to go, it was about two miles from my house. We had these caves up on this side hill. They would just let us go hang out in the caves in the mountains. <laughs> so there was all these caves. And and then across the, the field, there was this old barn. We'd go in that old barn and start a fire in the barn <laughs> and cook hot dogs. I know. I'm like two 12-year-old kids. I'm yeah, like, fire was hell? like the thing I loved to play with the most. Oh, I did too. I remember like soaking like old trucks Little old like model trucks mm-hmm. that I built in gas and just start them on fire in the sand pile. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs> and then like I know we pour. We got my dad's black powder and we poured like a stream <laughs> to to another yeah, pile. Man. I was like, this is just like on the cartoons. <laughs> yeah. It was like flash and like just mm-hmm. tons of smoke and both of our hands were burned. So that was a fun time. That goes to show you how stupid kids can be. Yeah. So you need to. Uh, you need to make them understand how dangerous it is. But you also want them to like the process of building a fire and, and understanding fire. their faces off. But you don't want them to become the girl in fire starter. Yeah. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. a there's a happy medium, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you start seeing that look in their face and you're like, oh, crap. Why do I want to burn? <laughs> Why do I want to burn myself? Exactly. I want to get in that fire. So, you know, let them understand matches and lighters and tinder and firewood and all those types of things and the methods of a good campfire. Again, and that can be taught when camping. It can be taught when hiking. It can be just That's taught a huge in, deal in the backyard. Even after you're done camping, like like putting out the fire. This is where correctly. we take a piss on the fire. <laughs> yeah, boys, this isn't just for fun. It's funny because like my kids are like, "Dad, are you ready to pee on the fire yeah, now?" Yeah, mine too. So they'll turn around and walk away yeah. away while I pee on the fire. Got, yeah. It's just been I've like got a, reinforcements now. The funny thing is, is it's I did it as a joke, kind of, but it's also like they know that you've got to put something on that fire before you leave. Right. Right. So now it's a joke, but it's also <laughs> yeah. like they learned something. It's time to piss on the fire. <laughs> You know, when they go to those bonfires in college, be like, "Where's my dad? <laughs> Dad's not here to take a leak on a fire." Well, your your dad, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, don't ask the boys to pee on a fire at the college <laughs> yeah, bonfire. Please don't, or the girls. Jeez. Yeah, please no. So, and then cooking over a fire is a great skill as well. Yeah, you know, get that fire, and that's a skill, man. It really is. Like, <laughs> I remember seeing it, uh, like camp them putting a uh, boiled, like boiling an egg in a cup, just sitting on the yeah. fire. I'm like, you can do that. Yeah, like cool stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of, and it's so much fun, and it tastes better. Yeah, say what you want. I love fire. Oh, fire's the best. 
Oh, let's go start a fire right now. <laughs> um, so I think I think the whole thing within fire fire safety is probably the number one priority with yeah. your kids. And then we talked about those fire drills at home. That's the thing with fire that the most important. Make sure they know that. The next item is self-defense. Again, this is a great SHTF skill for, for children, but it's a great life skill. Um, understanding when and where self-defense is needed and why it's important. Um, and then understanding that what you're learning is defense and is not offense. But, I mean, as a little kid, you don't give a sh- you No, just, no. I just, my whole thing when I was a little kid, I wanted to watch Karate Kid and I wanted to watch... Uh, yeah. The, and you I wanted, wanted to learn to you kick people to deliver in the face. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wanted to deliver that final blow. No retreat, no surrender. You know, that's that was how I looked at it. But self-defense is something they need to know because there's a bunch of buttholes at school. There's bullies. Yeah. Um, there's psychos out there. There's so many situations. Um, when girls start dating, that creeps me out. I've got three girls. That scares me more than anything. Is yeah. In high school or especially moving off to college, those dating in boys are buttholes. and You never know what's going to happen. So understanding self-defense is I just makes me feel better for yeah. one thing, right? Um, it's great for kids' self-esteem, man, for combating anxiety it boosts self-confidence. I can't recommend enough. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this timid, shy kid come into class at jujitsu. Six months later, they are like a completely different That's person. Awesome. They are freaking animals, <laughs> you know? And I know that translates off the mats as well. So to me, it's so important. It, it teaches them coping skills. For me, jujitsu is like a wonder drug for some kids, not for all kids, but for some. It teaches them that, you know, you can get through tough situations if you just think about it for a second but it also teaches them that hard work pays off man right you know so well and then the, <clears throat> the following the directions yeah and like oh yes the discipline yeah there's like a lot of discipline that, involved so. yeah so um i think self-defense is a great thing to go through with kids and there's a lot of different ways to do it just find out what works best for you and your kids right uh communications this one uh make sure that they understand how to call for help to me that's the one thing i always think about if i'm not home do they know how to get a hold of somebody if they need help? Do they so know so different in our age? It is. We yeah. always had a phone hanging Boom. next to the microwave. Yeah. Do they have a cell phone? If they do, obviously make sure they understand nine one one. Make sure they understand who might be close to home that they can get in, in touch with. If we aren't there, we've always said we've got a nurse that lives across the street. Go directly to Megan as yeah. soon as something, if something medical is going on, right? Go run over to them. If you can't get a hold of them, try to get a hold of us. If not, get a hold of Cam. You know they know. Um, who they need to get in touch with if there's an emergency and what are their options for backups? Do they, um, we went through this the other day. Do they understand what an emergency radio is, how to turn it on, how to get the information from it, why they would use it? Right. Uh, because my kids have never turned a it's radio not just on for FM 100. Yeah, well, they've never even turned a radio on true. like, like that to even listen to <laughs> That's it. That's true. It's a whole nother world, right? So they do seem like fascinating. Like we had my, uh, survival one uh-huh. camping and they were just like changing it mm-hmm. to find channels. They're like, what? Like, what yeah. is this magic? It is magic. Yeah. So make sure they understand how that works. Do they have a good emergency contact list? This will be part of that emergency plan too. But, um. And then you can talk about, do you have any code words if somebody needs to come pick up your kids during some issues? So that's all part of like your communications thing with your kids. It's called, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, OPSEC, yeah. um, operational security. This is a very, very tough one with children's. Very much. You know. Because um, they want to up, you know. Oh, yeah. They want to like, I got more. My dad has way more guns I, than your dad. I, we talked about it all the time when I was a kid. Like, my dad got this <laughs> Me gun. Me too. We shot this gun and guns yeah. and guns and guns and whatnot. You right. know, it's just too much fun for kids to talk about. So um, how do you tell all your kids these things but have them not tell everybody in town or at least every one of their friends? You got to know that probably they're going to talk to their friends about a lot of that stuff. They're going to think it's super cool and they're and they're going to want to feel super cool to tell their <laughs> right. kids that these, or their friends that these things are going on. So you can tell them what is most important to keep secret, but don't expect it to be kept secret because we know we've right. been kids, right? So you're going to have to make that choice about what to tell them and what not to tell them because you know your kids best what's going to be there. So just be thinking about operational security there. I don't worry about it as much. I mean, obviously, we have a podcast where we talk about it to everybody. So that's just not as big of a deal for me. It probably should be, but it is I what know. it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about shooting? Target practice. Um I think I think exposing kids to at a young age to firearms 
is crucial for me. I do too. For the safety aspect of it. For me, I think it's way better to introduce it to them, give them an understanding of what it is, than having them find it at a friend's house and, exactly. and start messing around with it. I know people not- are like, they're not old enough for a gun. And I'm just like, yeah. if you're a responsible parent that's like keeping mm-hmm. that gun safe and yeah. showing them, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. I think it's good. So to have that healthy respect for firearms early, I think is, for me, it's crucial. But you got to understand, you got to decide what's best there. But again, shooting is great as an SHTF skill for a self-defense skill for hunting, all yeah. those different things. We so. just got my middle age child that's like the craziest, mm-hmm. a, a soft um the uh airsoft, airsoft guns yeah. and i'm like that's a gun like yeah you can put an eye out like mm-hmm. this is serious and you know and that is a risk that we we took but yeah. like he was the one i'm like he's the one that needs the most help of understanding mm-hmm. like how important it is to yeah. like uh use a gun and not point it at people and things like that yeah for sure uh first aid uh, the basics of first aid, I think, are super important for kids. I, I don't remember my parents ever, like, teaching me first aid when no, I was little. Either. The only, I think the only time I got any of that was in Boy Scouts here and there, you know. Um, my kids need more training on this. The only thing don't. I learned in first aid was to not tell my parents that I hurt that myself somehow. That I cut somehow. myself with a knife that yeah. I wasn't supposed to be touching. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've been there. It's like... You either learn how to take care of it or <laughs> get laid out in your bedroom. Yeah. So, you know, when they're home alone, I'm always afraid something's going to happen. Somebody's going to get cut. Somebody's going to pass right. out, get knocked out, choke, all of those things. So I think understanding the basics, a lot of that, I'm hoping to get my kids in, uh, they're all girls, I'm hoping to get them in a babysitting class this summer. So they have like a babysitting certification thing where they learn CPR that's and they huge, just long run basic for first aid. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I'm gonna try and get him in that because it just it make me feel better. It's for my sake mostly, and yeah. I, obviously I want them to learn it. But like I said, Boy Scouts are good for that as well. The last one I wanted to talk about, which probably gets overlooked a lot, is financial um, skills for kids. I mean, when you think about life skills that is gonna serve them for the rest of their life finances are one of the biggest ones out there. Yeah. And a lot of people don't expose the their kids to that. biggest lacking. Yes. Like, I can't believe high school, I didn't learn anything no. about uh, finances. I had one semester of a life skills class and, like, one little piece yeah, of it was Yeah, I, I think that. we played life. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was, right? And, I mean, you, you get exposed to it, but you don't, you don't talk about, like, yeah. managing your money and using your money in, in the right way. Like, yep. It's just like savings, and savings mm-hmm. nowadays don't no. they don't do anything for you. So I was super lucky because my parents were actually pretty good at this. When I turned, like, 15, we'll see, when I turned 16, and they they bought a truck for me, and I had to pay payments to them. Yeah. Right? Um, and then after a while, they actually had me go get a loan. Yeah. For some tires and rims. And then that was great because it started building my credit at 16 years yeah, old. Here. You know, and I had like co signed for exactly. a car or yep. loan. And so those things are so good. To, and then just to get them to understand that, talk, talk to them about budgets, talk to them about emergency funds. That's, I tried so hard. Some of my kids are just horrible at saving their money. You know, they get like oh, an allowance. Oh, super hard. They just, as soon as they get the money, They're they like, want to go $2.30. Yeah. And yeah. they go like two twenty eight. dollars mm-hmm. I get that. It's like, no, you could save some of it. Like, yeah. And then use it somewhere. Exactly. It's like my oldest daughter is pretty good. She's four, she's turning 14 this week. And oh my gosh, really? I know it's, uh, it makes me sick. I want to throw up when I think about it. But she's starting to save for a car. I told her, I'll pay for <laughs> oh half. Gosh, dude, that's weird. I said, I'll pay for half if you pay for half. So she's starting to save that's up awesome. for when she turns 16, right? Smart. I think those things are great. You know, teach them about credit scores and interest rates, bank accounts, taxes, loans, all. I think that's going to be huge. But it's an age appropriate thing. I mean, don't start it at four. At four. You know, wait till they get a little bit older and they start figuring yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah. out. But um, I think that's cash register at age four. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, as I mentioned before, Costa Rica is going mm. through some rough stuff right mm-hmm. now. They had a you know cyber attack and shut things down. That could easily happen to you. You could yeah. lose all of your information. You could have your uh, social security number yeah. posted on billboards somewhere. You never know. <laughs> yeah. You never know. It's not good. So you can protect yourself though when you go online with Surfshark. Yeah. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that allows you to basically be positioned in some other location so they're not going to track it back to your IP address. Yeah. Pretty fancy. It's like going gray man online. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing I really like about Surfshark is they have probably the easiest to use app. And it doesn't matter if your device will connect to the internet. Most likely you can use Surfshark. Mm -hmm. 
either on your router, you can use it on your device itself, use the app, and it'll protect you when you go online, especially if you're traveling, you're in airports, you know, public Wi-Fi, you definitely want to be turning on some kind of virtual private network, and Surfshark is the best one. Um, Costs you about 60 bucks for 27 months, and if you don't even know what a VPN is and you want to test it out, 30 days money back guarantee. That Booyah. is awesome. Booyah. 24-7 support, risk-free 30 days, like I said, surfshark.deals slash casual preppers. You're going to love it. You're going to feel super safe. That's beautiful. And you can go wherever you want online. Get it. Supplies. Okay. So this is where, I think this is where certain kids become a little more interested. Mm -hmm. When you can go through these supplies and like talk to them about the use of them and why you have them. And it's a little more exciting. You know, this is the sexy part of prepping. Yeah. It's like cool gear and uh, different instruments and things like that. Like tubas to alert. Bassoon. <laughs> Kazoos. Kazoos, oh yeah. Yeah. Always popular. So getting started with them, uh, you want them to choose a good bag. And for kids, it's best to just go with the standard backpack. Mm -hmm. They're sling packs, duffel bags, purses. They're just not very convenient to carry around. Mm -hmm. So get them a good uh, fitted, like good fitting backpack. The thing is, like I've passed down, like here, use dad's backpack. It's like touching the back of their knees yeah. and this huge straps, like... You got to find one that's going to fit them, and yeah, you're going to have to adjust it through the through their ages. But it's hugely important if you're going to be bugging out or you're going to be hiking into the mountains or something like that. They need something that fits and distributes the weight well. So mm -hmm. picking a bag's huge, and kids love that part too. They're like, "Oh, this looks cool, it's camo." Oh yeah, for sure. My every year for school, they want a brand new bag, mm -hmm. um, and and there's nothing wrong with like a school bag dueling is that if you're like. You know, it's not in use anymore. They wanted a different one for school. That's yeah. a good bug out bag. Heck yeah. Um, let them build their bug out bag and just like kind of guide them a little, mm -hmm. but let them stick a bunch in there. And then once it's completely full, like let's go hiking with it. Let's see how it <laughs> They will learn a lot about weight yeah. if you kind of, it's you a know, physics lesson. Put in there, put in there what you want and then we'll pack it around. And then you can talk to them about the essentials and like why you don't carry all this stuff mm -hmm. and um, what each item's used for. A lot of times, We'll go to my parents and um, just in his backpack, my son will stuff like four or five different like Nerf guns. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's cool, but like yeah. you didn't bring underwear or socks oh, gosh, yes. or like you brought all these non-essential items. They're cool, but they're not useful. It's just a good time to talk to them about it when you do those things. So letting them build it, letting them put the things in. And then go back through it and be like, you know, why did you want to take this? And what use is it to you? What use would it be if we had to go away from home for several days? Things like that. Um, drawing up a list, an action plan. Like you have like you have the, the emergency plan is your family. But you may just want a small little individual plan or numbers and an action plan in their backpack. So that they know, mm -hmm. like, I drew this up. This is what we're going to do. Have them sign the bottom of it. Yep. Crayon. With their name, crayon. Cyan. <laughs> Sierra, Sienna. Yeah. Fuchsia. Fuchsia. Um, but checklists are super easy for kids. They, just, you know, they can go through, see the item, just check it off. Yeah. Um, contents in the bag, uh, you know, key items, food, sanitation, clothes that they're not going to be excited about. Like teach them, you got to put this stuff in. Then you can go to the really cool stuff like the hatchets, the fire starters. You definitely want a little kid having fire starters in their Molotov bag. kits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like adding those things in, you know, and, and talking about the safety and the use of them and when to use them. Radios, walkie talkies, like you said, how they use those, how they can scan the channels and things like that. Um, and then just usefulness out in the wilderness of building forts and traps. It's a, it's a good time to do that. When you go camping, let them pack their own bag and then go through their stuff while they're up there. Yeah, and then then we usually go at least twice a year. We pull those suckers out. You know, yeah. We take everything out because they forgot at, by that point oh, what yeah. was even in it. And then you can go through it again. You can replace it with new gear that you might have. You yeah. know, That's kind of – I do that like twice a year. I know. I'm, I'm coming up on take that. I've been meaning it. to go through. And it's fun. They love it every time. Bag. My kids love it every single time. They do. You Mine know? always do get into that. Yeah. They're like super excited and they're like – <laughs> they just go over the top, but yeah, that's what you want them to do. Exactly. Um, and then give them responsibility over their stuff. You know, you put this bag together. This is your stuff. Don't lose it. Mm -hmm. And if anybody gets hurt with it, it's your responsibility. Yeah. So it's just a good time to give them a little more responsibility on stuff. Also, 
like Greenland, and we've talked about this, don't let them carry the super crucial life sustaining <laughs> items. Yeah. Don't let them take their insulin with them. Yeah. Don't let them carry a handgun, like things that hand they don't. Hand grenade. <laughs> hand grenade. Or uh, let them pack their food, you know, that you, this is a 72 hour kit and mm-hmm. they put in just like two things of ramen noodles or something <laughs> and four packs of uh, like uh, fruit snacks. My kids would just be like flaming hot Cheetos. It's all <laughs> yeah, it is. So it's like, you gotta, and syrup. You, you've got to go through it and let them understand that like these are crucial items that'll keep you alive. And then probably like their identification and stuff, probably a copy with them. And yeah. then you have the original and, um, medicines and stuff. You don't want them to be, you know, you yeah. either need to have that, the backup with you or <laughs> yeah, just, just don't let them carry let those them really carry high, yeah. highly important items. One of the things that always, um, you have to think about with any children, any kids is entertainment, you know, consider what their age is and what are you going to have to distract them during some emergency just That's to kind of biggest yeah like number one part of my list is like how am i going to entertain these you got to you got to be nuts let them feel some sort of normalcy in a time when it gets crazy cuz it's not fun for a kid man no. and anything that's kind of out of the ordinary it's really tough on them I mean, it's tough on adults obviously but it's even but worse you don't want them to feel no. that no, and it, and it makes every... it harder on you if if you're trying to deal with that, you know. So you've got to make sure that you have something. Um, this goes for your home. This goes for bug out bags. This goes for vehicles. All of those places you need to have something, and whatever that is, obviously it can be books, it can be movies, it can be games, it can be devices. But you just have to. It can be candy. All those types of things. You just have to understand what it is, where you need it why you need it and when you need it because I think it's one of the most important things that you can prep for these kids. You, you just got to have something for them to do. Take their mind off what's happening and make it easier for you so when you're trying to deal with a situation, you're not also dealing with a kid yeah. who is just freaking out, right? It, 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 we don't like to always just give them a device and say, go play with your device, right? But if you have but it's to... it's a lifesaver in some ways. In an SHTF scenario, it's going to be gigantic, right? Or yeah. even if they have a book that you can read. Like my one daughter, it's, I mean, she when I take her to school in the morning, she's reading all the way to school. She's reading all the way home. If I have a book with her, she's fine. She's like, she'll zone out. that way. Huh? I don't know. Like, I was never that way. I wasn't either. I'm so glad my kids read yeah, all the time. I don't get it. I'm happy. But like, if you have a book, you know, that's, I, I was no, just thinking they, about that the other day. I need to get a book in her bug out bag yeah. because... Again, yeah, my kids, have, they do the same thing. So yeah. it's like books are huge and yeah, they, so, they will help a ton. So just think about that. I do. That's probably the Good. number one thing on my plan is like, how <laughs> yeah. will I entertain them so that I don't go insane? Yep. Um, I'm, this There's a lot of information with infants and toddlers. So mm-hmm. more specific group preparations and, and prepping with your kids. So infants and toddlers, little creatures, mm. they're super dependent. Yeah. Obviously a lot of times going to be spent taking care of them. Mine are moving out of this stage. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember a time when we had the podcast going that I had, you know, Ellis, Babies. my youngest, and yeah. it was like kind of terrifying because there's a lot of detailed planning that has to go into like taking care of these babies because mm-hmm. formulas, you know, you, you depend so much on the system. Yeah. Like you, you want, you need your formula from Walmart you need your diapers, you got medicines and like, it's, you're so like heavily reliant on commercial goods and things like that, yep. that you've got to plan like way more in detail for babies. Like a big part of it is some people assume, you know, breastfeeding, I'm breastfeeding and that's going to work great. And then we'll just transition to food. But there's a lot of things that can happen with a, a mother that would cut off that, yeah. <laughs> you know, milk supply. She gets injured. Um, it's going to, cost a lot of calories for her Mm -hmm. and so you you can't do that forever so even though you're a hardcore breastfeeder maybe you're from south america and you're still breastfeeding your five-year-old yeah but you've got a plan like for that not being a possibility you you've got to consider getting formula you got there's there's some different recipes online to making your own formula well what if also what if for some reason in this event the the mom and the baby are separated true and you it's with the the babies with the dad on that yeah the dad ain't got no baby juice no not not that kind of baby juice (laughs) so you have to have something you know to to feed the the freaking baby yeah that's a nightmare for a father that's horrible yeah dependent on breastfeeding yeah not the father's dependent on breastfeeding (laughs) 
Well, there enough. might be that <laughs> too. Different dependency, but <laughs> he can make it. Yeah, the baby is yeah. gonna have some issues. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's uh, you want to store some instant uh, formulas, mm-hmm. powders, and you could even freeze some of the formulas. But anyways, look into that. The planning is gonna be a little more detailed. And another part of that is. Um, so on that, Red Cross and FEMA both recommend breastfeeding mothers store infant formula. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they know that they're not going to, they could just dry up. Yeah. But um, a big part of formula is, uh, according to recommendations, you need 1.5 liters of water per feed, uh, per feeding for cleaning just the equipment and stuff. Like mm-hmm. just the bottles to wash them out, rinse them and mixing. That's a lot of water. So you're you're going to yeah. be using a ton more of your water supply if you have an infant. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, on top of that, think about the sanitation issues, baby diapers, knowing how to do cloth. We, we almost got to the point of trying cloth diapers because I was interested in seeing how the whole system worked, but Mm -hmm. it sounded like such a pain and I was like, I live in a modern world. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, we just went with baby diapers. Yeah. No, thank you. But it's a good idea to learn how Mm -hmm. to do cloth diapers and to learn how to sterilize and clean them and and reuse them and things like that. You just never know. Um, Biggest thing with kids, like infants and babies, toddlers somewhat too, is like having proper treats and snacks. Yeah. They're not always going to want to eat the same thing. Mm-hmm. Getting those devices that like mash and um, puree foods, like you, you can't buy the bottles of baby food all the time. So learn how to make your own and make it, you know, appropriate for the age that you're not going to have choking problems. Mm-hmm. Because baby food, they can pick that up pretty early, and you can start introducing the same table foods if you prepare it properly mm. early on. Another big thing for you and the baby is like nose, nose, noise reduction items. Ah, yeah. Sleeping for the baby is huge. You're going to want them to sleep. Obviously, it's super hard to do anything when your baby's awake. So if you're bugging out to a location, how can you isolate them into a, you know, what if it's, um, what's the one movie that... John Krasinski did. Uh, Quiet Place? Quiet Place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just make a coffin for the baby. Yeah. Cover him up, oxygen in there. Baby That's such cough. an interesting, like, yeah, take right. on that. It was it, pretty cool. Yeah, it's way good. But, like, thinking about the noise reduction for them and to quiet them down in case you're trying to be, like, all stealthy out there. Mm-hmm. But biggest of all, too, is probably snacks and treats. I'm telling you. Yeah. And I want to just ease the pain and suffering for you and them with all kinds of fruit snacks, mm. fruit roll-ups, mm. bubble gums. Mm cereals, Funnings. things like that, Funyuns. But I know you don't want your kid to eat unhealthy, but like it's a very calming thing for them to have yep. some of these items once in a while. Um, games, books, and entertainment too. So that's yeah. for the little teeny ones. So now let's kind of talk about those school age children and the teenagers. Um, get rid of them. Get rid of them immediately. <laughs> so school age children kind of come with their own set of issues. You know, infants, they just lay around, they sleep, they poop, you feed them. The teenagers, I said. No, the the, the <laughs> infants. Uh, but kids, they need something to do or they become part of the problem, right? They make a ton of noise. They can't be reasoned with at all, ever. And they need distractions constantly. It's like hanging out so with Cam. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, there's some parts of that. <laughs> like we mentioned before, toddlers and young children have to have candy. They have to have devices. They have to have games to keep them happy and quiet. And then you come back to the food issue. So you can almost get away with just storing the same survival food as you eat for these kids. But some kids are so very, very picky. They'll die. They will just die. (laughs) So you have to understand what they will eat and how. what do you have to do to have food in a long-term scenario for them. If you got to get nuggets and mac and cheese and just figure out, you know, what sort of long-term shelf life food you can get within that category, then you got to do it. Yeah. That's all you can do. I feel like for my kids, I need to have like a backup generator on a chest uh, freezer mm-hmm. with chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Or they'll die. Yeah, that's they what won't, they are. They won't have anything to fall back on. Exactly. Uh, and so you'd have to understand that and you got to figure out a way to do that. And then you go to bugging out, you know, toddlers and young school age kids, they can be difficult in a bug out scenario. They can walk, but they're not going to walk very far. <laughs> yeah. So you have to know that you're going to be carrying them at some point. So. Think about that. Have a plan for that and figure out what you're going to do there. Then we move on to teens. Boy, like I said, I got a daughter that's turning 14 in tomorrow. Um, And 
Um, I'm starting to learn about teenagers. Um, they have some very, very specific issues that they bring with them. They can be defiant. They can be super independent. They can be moody. They can be super horny. They want to eat everything in sight. <laughs> teenagers, they're a different animal, right? There's just so many things you have to think about. They are like almost a real human being. <laughs> like they're so close, right? But um, but their brain but, hasn't developed Exactly. At all. I actually put that somewhere in oh, here. Oh, did you? Um, but- they can start all to... the parts are, are clicking, <laughs> yeah, pretty close. But the brain is yeah isn't quite connected. Yeah, it's something's wrong in the engine. Just <laughs> just something's just off, right? Um, they can start to take on some of that prepping load, you know, especially in SHGF situations. They can have their own bug out bag. They can actually carry it. Um, they're old enough to learn some real, actually useful skills. No, you did put it down. <laughs> you know, maybe the they can maybe they can drive. That's super helpful in any scenario. You know, they can pick up their younger siblings in an emergency if needed. Um, they, at this point... Their boyfriends and the boyfriends girlfriends? And girl, no. Um, <laughs> they should be able to cook. Maybe they can defend themselves and the family. Maybe they can hunt. They can have first aid skills. Basically, they can do almost anything an adult can do. But, like I said, their brains are not yet fully yeah. formed. They can be irrational. They can be depressed. They can be unpredictable. Yeah. So... Be There's like aware. an advantage and disadvantage to teens. It's like yes. they're fearless mm -hmm. and they're re like idiots handicapped too. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's you you're taking the good in with the bad on this stuff, and so you need to understand what their strengths and their weaknesses are, and especially in an emergency situation, and do your best with what you're working with here. Um, getting them to follow an emergency plan. And not just like drive off to a friend's house in an emergency <laughs> is going to be pretty tough. So you need to know your kids. You need to do what's best. So um, good luck with teenagers. Yeah, I, I, I'm terrified. They're like that. almost humans. They're like vampires or something <laughs> or like werewolves. I don't know. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Welcome We're going to train you some ways of civilization. <laughs> yeah. And they eat like crazy. Yeah, I've heard that. They just like bottomless pits. <laughs> and my my daughter, I mean, she's not too bad yet, but she eats a lot and she's like rail thin. <laughs> I don't know where she's putting it all. Like, uh, yeah, that makes it hard to keep like yeah. your supplies up. It really does. So anyways, that's that's kids. Man. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so much. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot you got to look into for the, your age. Yeah. Your kid's age. And look stuff. it up. Kids are weird. Kids are Look it on weird. the internet. Diseases they carry. And, ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Developmental issues. <laughs> There's so many things. They stink. Mental health for parents. Uh, yeah. So. Guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Tac Pack. You know, I was thinking about this today. Tac Pack's been with us for so long. <laughs> yeah. How long has it been? I don't know. Five years? At least. Probably. I think they were the very beginning. They were the, they were the very first one. Yeah, they were the first one. So thank you, Tac Pack. We appreciate you. You know, they are the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside use our code casual preppers and you're going to get a separate bag of edc gear that's for awesome. free for and they already nothing. are giving you yeah so much in there somebody's bucket. going to jail at some point <laughs> but they haven't got caught yet so true. <laughs> you know so that's great that's yeah. great don't know how they're doing it no nope. but benefit so go to tackpack.com use our code casual preppers and get some real good stuff. And speaking Heck of yeah. subscription boxes, we have the latest battle box, and we're on mission 87. Holy crap, yeah. that's a lot of missions. The first item in the basic box is the Clean Freak Body Wipe 12 Pack. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't have anything like this. You know, I was thinking about taking that to jujitsu and just, you know. Wiping down all the people you have to. No, seriously. Like, some <laughs> of them stink. I'm sure. Like, and I'd be like, hey, buddy, great roll. Take one of these with you. Just move up their forearm <laughs> onto their shoulder. Yeah. I'm gonna have arm. one in, in like <laughs> stuffed in my belt and undo it with the stinky ones. And like as I'm choking, just like wiping them off at the same time. <laughs> you know, gotcha. You gotcha. know, like, smell good and you tapped out, boy. I am, I'm feeling wet right now. I don't know. I'm sweating. You smell good though. Sweating. Yeah. Um, and then we got the Fox Edge Arrowhead set. Oh, Ooh. That's so cool. I was just looking at that. That's cool, huh? Yeah. Neato Frito, and that's in the basic box. And then we have the model Flexa Beaner. These things are kind of cool. Yeah. And that's not it. That's the oh, that's different one. It's the Flexa Beaner. They look like little rubber um, bracelets. Nope. Nope. That ain't it neither. It's in there. Take my word yeah, for it. It's in there, I promise. And then we go to the advanced box, and we have the model bottle with rinse mod. You had that one. There they are. I flipped them out. Yeah, those are it. There's little things. You got the model bottle. With there's the rinse mod and there's a model bottle. 
That's a cool model bottle. Model bottle. It's really cool. You, you, it's a, it's like a water bottle, but you can screw off both ends. And so you can put this rinse mod on the one end, and you can hang that sucker up, and it's basically like a little shower. You squeeze it, oh, and the yeah. water comes That's out. That's smart. And, or you can squeeze it and wash your hands off. I always drink shower water. Oh, every time, every time. <laughs> Full show. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. A little bottle. Yeah. And yeah, the, they have a whole bunch of different mods that you can buy for it. It's model bottle. Model bottle. <laughs> makes sense now. Yeah, it makes sense now. And then you got the Pro Block Blocks box with the DD Hammocks DD Tarp 3x3. Three three. This sucker's a big old Rob tarp. Roblox box. Roblox blocks. Um, this is a big old tarp. I always tarp. say that. My kids are like, it's Roblox. I'm like, Roblox? Roblox. <laughs> now I'm like, I feel old. <laughs> Roblox. Um, yeah, this is a big old freaking tarp. Three meters by three meters. Oh, when I like when I saw the thing, I was like, three feet by three feet? I no, yeah, it's be worth meters. Crap. Nice. That's I like love a, tarps. So many use. It's like an English yard or something. <laughs> Meter. And then the Pro Plus box, we have the Raptor Razor Filet Mano Kit. This is for your fish, gutting your fish, filleting oh, nice. your fish. It's cute. Ooh, yeah. That's pretty nice. Nice. So that's Battle Box. Use our code Casual Preppers, and you're going to get a free knife with that. That's pretty rad. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. All right. This is going to be super quick. Okay. Okay. So, since we've been talking about kids and mm. preparing for kids and stuff like that, just some medical supplies that you need to consider for kids. Very specific. Um, it, this is tricky because if you don't have a medical license, but you may know somebody with some connections, mm -hmm. but getting some powder form of antibiotics oh. can be super helpful. Really? So, like, when you, you know, ear infection, they give you a bottle of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. It's usually mixed at the time you pick it up. Oh, so it's I didn't powder form in the bottle. Yeah, so that's cool. If you can, I mean, sometimes you, you does it some, last longer that way than it does, obviously. Yeah, once it's mixed, it's only gonna give you six months at the very most. Mm. Like that's pushing or six months, six weeks, six weeks. It's gonna turn all rancid and gross, and yeah. black changes colors. It's disgusting. Mm. Um, dosage guides are super helpful, like all the time. I mean, I refer to them daily mm -hmm. for kids. Like you, you want to have some form printed off for just your basic like ibuprofen and Tylenol. Mm -hmm. And then you can get a more advanced guide that tells you dosages for antibiotics. Like maybe you can cut uh, an antibiotic pill. So, you know, disclaimer here, don't use any medicines and without your, you know, without medical supervision. This is not but medical advice. In the event of yeah. when you're on your own, you're going to want to have a good dosage guide for weight and everything like that. Syringes give you a lot of flexibility in dosing and mm -hmm. Other medical uses for kids, so get you some syringes of some type so you can dispense meds and spray out ears or whatever you want to do with them. Pedialyte, electrolyte powders, anything to combat diarrhea. That's probably the most common thing you're going to deal with. Diarrhea. You're going to be eating weird crap, uh -huh. and you're going to be crapping. Yep. You're gonna be eating weird crap, and it's going to come out crap. A bunch of crapping. Um, thermometers, mm. pulse oximeters are super useful because as a healthcare provider, like just recently too, doing a lot of televisits, it's so helpful when somebody has those things because yeah. they can say, my kid has true fever of 103, not 195, like they said. I felt her head, got to be around 195. Yeah. Like you want to have an accurate reading of what the temperature is and so you can communicate that to some other healthcare provider. And a pole sock, the one that you put on their finger, appropriate size for kids can be super helpful. It tells you the you know what their heart rate is, how high, and you want to maybe have a guide of like, when that's super concerning, and it gives you an oxygen level. Um, rash creams, diaper rash is going to be huge if you have infants and babies. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen a bunch of times. And knowing how to, like, control those rashes on your own is huge. How to, like, protect the skin, how to keep it from continuing to, like, um, get infected and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if you got some tam topical antibiotic creams and some antifungal creams, super useful. You want to have some on backup and stored away. Bag bomb. Bag bomb. Yep, bag bomb. Uh, allergy meds. Kids freaking get weird rashes and reactions all the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to have a way to combat that. And also dual benefit or triple benefit, Benadryl. It's going to give you some sleep, nausea, anxiety relief. It's going to help them sleep. It's going to help them sleep, and you're going to want something to help them sleep. Absolutely. So... Um, and then maybe if your kid has a lot of health problems, you're going to want to like laminate that, put it mm -hmm. in their bag. So when they get lost and you're thankful for it, somebody knows how to take care of them. <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> will call her with their name on it and your yeah. number maybe. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is Bennett. Yeah. He has ADD and a bunch of weird <laughs> rashes. <laughs> most diarrhea, most of the time. <laughs> Good luck. Do not call. 
You yeah. can have him. He's can useful for some things. He's yeah. pretty funny. Um, and then uh, another note I didn't put in here is like plan on those young females mm. developing Ugh. advanced female things. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So sanitation supplies yeah. for uh, female health is a huge thing to consider. It's like mm-hmm. your kids may grow into puberty during uh, an SHTF. And that's oh, going to be tricky. That's, that's going to be tricky. Super tricky. So anyways, um, oh, those man. are just some basic things cool. to think about for when you have to take care of your kids through their growing years. Beautiful. Thank you, kids. That's it. That's it. That's kids. Now you know how that's to take care of kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and get you some. Get you some. You know, <laughs> adopt them. Go get one. Borrow one. I don't know. <laughs> Try it out for a do, bit. Do it. See if you Making like Making them fun. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Make sure you have subscribed if you haven't. Make sure you follow us on all the socials because we're on all of them pretty much. Yeah. Uh, make sure to go listen to the Bugging Out podcast as well. Some fun stuff. And anything else, Cameron? Nope, that's it. All right, stay survived.